to soon to be absent companions. Excuse me one second, folks. Um, to also absent companions. You shall be missed, you shall be remembered, and most assuredly, you shall not ever be forgotten. Just give me one second here, folks. Mm, Jack Daniels. Mm. Need a chaser. Mm. Ah. All right, well, you folks, um, I did drink it. Mm, good times. All right, you guys are now wondering, why am I drinking to my blue Toyota Corolla 1995 vintage model LE, which would be your luxury edition with the sunroof and the alloys and um, all the other good stuff like that there. <coughs> that was a bit of a rough one. Mm. Well, anyway, um, I'm toasting this booger because uh, in the scheme of things, uh, let me put this in perspective. Circa 2001, I went to CarMax. I needed to replace my, um, all right, my Datsun 280ZX was getting tired. I needed a daily driver. I went down there, looked at the computer. They basically sit you down. They say, okay, here, check out a computer. Look at our stock, blah, blah, blah. Something jumps out at you. See if you like it. Let us know what you think. So I'm looking through, and this stupid blue Corolla keeps popping up. I mean, I'm looking at every single car in the place. This thing must have popped up like four or five times with the source parameters that I utilized. Finally, I was like, Oh, okay, dude, let, let me drive it. And um, to put it in perspective, uh, those of you who happen to know Maryland, I was um, I was wrenching cars in Bethesda, Maryland. It's an area just north of Washington, D.C., and it is probably about the most anal region in all of Maryland. It has got the most hyper-caffeinated butt pukes you will ever trip over. And I do mean trip over because they're like hyperkinetic bouncing beans uh, Mexican jumping beans that make not a lot of sense, and unfortunately, these assholes. Uh, and now, actually, if you do reside in Bethesda and you're cool, please blow it off. But you know the kind of guys of which I'm talking of. Ugh, speaking about... Just give me one second here. i got to wash this sucker down. Mmm. <clears throat> mm. That was a little bit of a harsh shot of Jack there. Well, anyway, um... So basically, the long and the short of it is, I was working in Bethesda, I needed a daily driver, my Datsun was getting tired, and yeah, I do love the Z cars, but I don't have one currently. Um, <clears throat> I was wrenching cars at a gas station, which is no longer the same one which I was wrenching at. That shows you how circular things are in Bethesda, they switch over real quick. But anyway, the, uh, the long and the short of it is, this is going to be primarily audio, so if you guys want to click off to something else while I'm talking, feel free. It's just basically going to be me. Poking at the picture, that's it. So anyway, I'm wrenching on these cars, and I needed something reliable, because, you know, the Datsun was, it, it, I really needed to switch out the motor. I mean, it was it was tired. Um, I mean, it was having oil pressure problems, and, <clears throat> excuse me, Jack Daniels burp. I, I was having, like, uh, oil pressure problems. It was having cooling problems. Wasn't the most reliable. I needed something I know was going to get me from point A to point B, irregardless of the situation, irregardless of the weather, and would get me from point A to point B. Oh, did I mention besides wrenching on cars, I was driving for dominoes? So I needed something I knew for a fact was going to be reliable. So between these two jobs, working in Bethesda, hating it, uh, making okay money, but still dealing with the situation at hand, I needed something reliable. This car kept popping up on the computer. Finally, I said, all right, all right, dude. Uh, you know, older guy. I mean, older guy. Retired person, was working at CarMax, was playing sales guy. Said, you want to drive this thing around? I was like, okay, it's a Toyota Corolla. How bad can it be? So I got it, and it had 57,000 on the clock. The car did not, look not, did not look nearly this nice, but not far off. It actually looked pretty, really damn nice for its age. I mean, the paint was really good. Uh, the alloys were okay. The interior was dead nuts. Found out later the thing was smoked in, but... It's, that's another story for another time, but basically the long and the short of it is I basically got into this thing, and it was a very clean car. Um, hassle with CarMax a little bit about the timing belt, because, you know, 60K is the interval for a Toyota Corolla have a timing belt changed out. We went back and forth, back and forth. I said, guys, a deal breaker. I'm not going to spend $300 for a new timing belt just to go 2,000, 3,000 miles, because it was like 57,000 and change, and uh, it needed a new timing belt. Recommended, but... When you pop a belt in a Corolla, they really don't break anything. They just stop running. <clears throat> Those of you who rent cars know exactly which I'm speaking of. Well, anyway, I got into this thing, and it drove like a Corolla. Translation, 
not the fastest, not the prettiest, not the best handling. They actually do handle okay for a little, you know, family car. Um, but it was dead nuts reliable from the outset. I knew about these things. They are just legendary for their reliability. 300,000 on these things is about on par with needing to really get a lot of work done. All right, so basically flash forward to <clears throat> driving this thing, driving this thing, driving this thing, picked it up at 57,000. I'm on the clock now about 181. Um, one of my co-workers, translation, the guy I work for, happens to be a family member in the tow company. And also, um, by extended relation, has a, uh, uh, how should we put this? A, a manager of a body shop that needed a daily driver that wasn't going to break the bank because this Toyota pickup truck is getting really expensive. Or is it a Nissan pickup? I, I forget. But anyway, irregardless, he needed something that's going to be a little easier on gas because the pickup's kind of thirsty. <clears throat> Case in point, this is starting to get a little bit of technical stuff wrong with it. Uh, the gas tank's leaking. Uh, the motor mount is tired. Uh, the transmission slips a little bit. And what it is is stupid on those things. A little, pla little uh, rubber ball about yay big around. Gets worn out, sloshes around, lets too much transmission pressure loose. In between first and second gear, and it gets sloppy, cruddy shifts and comes up weird off the line. Not a deal breaker, but you got to put it up on the left. you got to change out a $12 piece of crap. It's basically a little rubber check valve. Let's give it one second here. Mm. Ugh. Motor mount is a little bit more involved. Put it up on the left. I switched it out for one. I welded up like a dumbass. Just trying to get the thing to the point where it stopped clunking and clattering and carrying on. Now it vibrates like crazy because it's a solid mount. Ugh. Ask anybody in the business, the straight four-cylinder engine is about the harshest vibration motor design on the planet. All right, well, anyway, flashing ahead to current times. About 181, the car is getting old. Um, I got the CRV. All right, now let's put it in perspective. <clears throat> I have a CRV. Mrs. Dude has a CRV. I have the Del Sol. I have the CRX. I have the Corolla. That is five cars. Now, the only problem is with All Snake, All Snake goes, well, dude, you got five cars. You can't have five cars in the same policy. You can only have four cars. You need to make a new policy for one car. Translation the CRV is on a new policy. It's getting expensive. Somebody's got to go. The Del Sol will probably be sold very soon thereafter. Need to have a little body work done to fix the thousand bucks screw up. But here's the long and the short of it. I'm bidding adieu to the 2005 Corolla LE because it's just one too many cars. Also, the other thing, too, it really is not the best in inclement conditions. And when we have snow, this car stays parked because it sucks. I drive Mrs. Dude CRV. And um, now, because I have my own, I'm driving my own CRV. I also notice something very color appropriate. This is a blue car. My CRV is a blue car. I'm trading a blue car for a blue car with only one big difference. The back wheels are spinning along with the front wheels. Good times. Also, um, I may have made note about it in the comments, but I'm going to make note of about it in my video. I'm 45 years old or so, maybe 46 or so, or 44 or so, or 47 or so, or I'm mid-40s, okay? And the joints are not doing good. All the crap I've done to myself in the past is really coming back to haunt me now, okay? So I need something that's easier to get in and out of. Sedans, you're having to sit way down, slump into the thing, and getting in out of it, is not fun. Getting out of a tow truck is not so bad because you're basically just getting into it and climbing into it and you're there. Slipping down and getting into a CRV is very simple. You put your butt in there, you swing your legs in, you're in the vehicle. Getting in and out of a sedan is not so much fun. I mean, <clears throat> all right, let me put it in perspective here. My left knee in mid 40s is probably equal to about a guy in his mid 60s. I've had three arthros on it. It's crap. I mean, it, it's it's not good. If I was to kick a clutch all day long, like I used to, I would be increasing the wear on it, and it's not doing great right now. Pretty much, I've just outgrown the Corolla. So, unfortunately, the Corolla needs to go bye-bye. I need to, well, get into something a little easier to get in and out of, and that's where the CRV came in. Uh, Mrs. Duda's a CRV. I have a CRV. <clears throat> They're almost exactly interchangeable. I mean, basically, we can jump from one of the other vehicles. As a matter of fact, she drove mine today because um, I went to work. I drove hers. She drove mine today to work because she could flex time because, well, she works for Uncle Sugar, and you can do that. 
So basically, she flexed her time out and went and got emissions testing because in a Maryland state, uh, in the Maryland state of absurdum, uh, let me put it in perspective here. A favored disc jockey that basically, her talk show host that basically just passed the name of Ron Smith, he used to refer to Maryland as the state of absurdistan. And this is a very absurdistan state, so it kind of falls with being that you're going to be doing emissions testing, spending 15 bucks to prove that your car farts tulips and CRVs fart tulips because they're California emission cars for all 50 states. Ugh. Just give me one second here. I need to whip my whistle. Mmm. So while it's a little bit of a heartbreaker, today I was cleaning out, removing the last of the debris, translation, a whole bunch of crap I forgot about. That's been accumulating in the Corolla ugh, for God knows how long, and I do mean God knows how long, because I've had the car since 2001, 10 years, 130,000 miles on the clock, it's given me damn good service, this car has never, ever left me stranded, ever. It's been dead nuts reliable, and, um, Toyota-san, sir, you did us a service by producing this body style of Corolla because it is dead on reliable. The only thing that's keeping me from driving it now is a dead battery and a transmission mount and a leaking gas tank. Okay, and a slippy transmission. In effect, I gotta get in out of a Corolla that's really low compared to a CRV. Other than that, if you guys are looking for a good second car, or if you guys are looking for a dead nuts good student mobile... Get yourself the 1993 to 1999 Toyota Corolla. And I knew you made 99 because they did a slight motor upgrade, you know, about halfway through. Dead on reliable cars. The only thing this thing has ever done is get me speeding tickets, um, get me red light tickets, and uh, <laughs> get me a couple flat tires. But it has never left me stranded, ever. As a matter of fact, I ran this thing down to the point where I was sucking fumes around turns and the thing was stalling and picking back up. I got it up to the gas station. I was waiting for the next person to come out of line. It stalled at the gas pump. I pushed it forward three feet, stuck the nozzle in here, tanked it up, fired it up, drove it home. This thing has never left me stranded. And for that, I can only claim that, well, it's a good steed, and I'm going to give it a good retirement by giving it to somebody else who can use it. And that vein, I will say, adios, Corolla, you have served me well. All right, folks, uh, I don't want to keep this too terribly long, but I wanted to pay homage to the 1995 Corolla LE, and it's been an excellent vehicle to me, and I've, well, I've enjoyed it as much as you can enjoy a Toyota Corolla, and it's not a sports car, but it is dead nuts reliable. It will never leave you stranded. Good times. Here it is, fuckers. I'm going to say, uh, well, you know, keep in a ten ring, eat good, get yourself a Toyota Corolla. Damn, damn, damn reliable vehicles. They will never leave you stranded. Good times.